on August 13, 1970. As a result of an improper warm-up while lifting weights, Lee severely strains the fourth sacral nerve in his lower back. It's an injury that will continue to plague him for the remainder of his life. The injury leaves Lee virtually bedridden for a period of six months. His doctors tell him he may never be able to kick again. For Bruce to be lying down in bed 24 hours a day for approximately about six months is, was an impossible thought. You know, you cannot contain him like that. But he did because he knew that if there were any future, even to walk normally, he would need to give this time to heal. So he spent a great deal of time um, resting flat on his back for quite a long time and then also, you know, just sitting, sitting in a chair. But he was not one to just waste time. So he spent this amount of time um, doing a lot of researching of all of his vast library of books, which were books on the martial arts, all combative arts, all hand-to-hand -hand arts, whether they be Western, Eastern, modern, or ancient, all types of philosophy, psychology, especially in the motivational field now that he was injured and uh, his future was in jeopardy. He ne felt he needed to self-motivate himself all the time. Unable to put his energy to use physically, Lee now channels it mentally. The writings of the Buddha, Alan Watts, Carl Rogers, Lao Tzu, Friedrich Perls, Daiset Suzuki, and Jiddu Krishnamurti become his constant companions. Of these authors, Lee is particularly taken by the thoughts of Krishnamurti, who states that truth cannot be organized without invalidating it. You have to be a light to yourself. Not the light of a professor or an analyst or a psychologist or, or the light of Jesus or the light of the Buddha. Or you have to be a light to yourself in a world that is utterly becoming dark. I believe that um, part of the concept that he enjoyed so much about Krishnamurti's philosophy was one of self-reliance and if you're looking for truth, you must look inward rather than outward. Lee begins to write about his new insight and its application to martial art. His writings will fill seven large volumes. Slowly, Lee begins to battle back. Although the back injury will prove to be a permanent problem, within six months he has proven both the naysayers and the medical community wrong. Not only is he able to kick again, he becomes a better martial artist than he ever was before. Lee's harrowing experience, coupled with his new insight, served to underscore for him the validity of his belief that there is no help but self-help, including help in the form of instruction in the art of unarmed combat. Even his own beloved creation, Jeet Kune Do, by far the most scientific of all martial arts, is not exempt from his solvent analysis. Lee sees his error in the fact that he had been striving to create the ultimate way or style of martial art to teach to his students. First, he thought he had it with the Chinese way of martial art. Then, more recently, in his newly created Way of the Intercepting Fist. But Lee has now come to see that the ultimate truth does not reside in ways or styles, but within the soul of each individual. I do not believe in styles anymore. I mean, I do not believe that there is such thing as like Chinese way of fighting or the, or the Japanese way of fighting or whatever way of fighting because unless human beings have three arms and four legs, we will have a different form of fighting. Mm. But basically, we have only two hands and two feet. So styles tends to uh, 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 not only separate men, you know, because they have their own doctrines, and then the doctrine became the gospel truth, you know, that you cannot change, you know. And, but if you do not have styles, if you just say, well, here, here I am, you know, as, uh, as a human being, how can I express myself totally and completely? Then it's just two people who are being aware of their own movements, who are observing the other person's movements and being able to fit in with that person's movements so that there's no set pattern of movements, no, well, when he does this, then I do this. It's just a total 
freedom to react to what the other person does. In fact, Bruce inscribes it perfectly on the back of this medallion uh, where he wrote the words that have become his motto. And it says, using no way as way, having no limitation as limitation. Over the years, this phrase has been somewhat misinterpreted and people think of using no way as way to mean anything I do is okay and anything I do is my way. I don't think Bruce really intended it to mean that way. He just meant not to be um, boxed in by a certain way so that you never get into a situation where there's only one response. You adapt to what the situation calls for. I think Bruce had that down pretty well. When there is a way, man, there lies the limitation. To me, okay, to me, ultimately, martial art means honestly expressing yourself. Now, it is very difficult to do. I mean, it is, it is easy for me to put on a show and be cocky yeah. and be flooded with a cocky feeling and then yeah. feel like pretty cool and all that. Or I can make all kinds of phony thing, you see what I mean? Blinded by it, or I can show you some f really fancy movement. But to express oneself honestly, not lying to oneself, and to express myself honestly, not that, my friend, is <laughs> very hard to do. That, that's the whole key right there, you know. Do you know yourself? Do you know your skills? Do you know your weaknesses? Are you able to adjust uh, your life uh, to to compensate for whatever's happening and, and take advantage of whatever's happening in terms of uh, pluses and minuses. Um, that 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 was his approach, and uh, he he was uh, in, in, an incredible example of that. You know, a, a walking model of that. In his critically acclaimed performance on the television series Long Street, Lee attempts to teach his student, played by James Franciscus, this higher purpose of his martial art. Lee, I want you to teach me what you did the other night. I already told Miss Bell I can't. I'm willing to empty my cup in order to taste your tea. Your open-mindedness is cool, but it doesn't change anything. I don't believe in system, Mr. Longstreet, nor in method. Now, without system, without method, what's to teach?